this is the Provoke Prawn, and here I'm showing you how to install and test a Kingston Fury Renegade MVME. In this build guide, I'm going to be showing you how to install this drive on a brand new motherboard that's fresh out of the box. But you can apply the same logic if you're adding a drive to a pre-existing motherboard, so to your PC as it stands. Just remember to unplug it before you go through any of this process. I'm going to show you all the clips outside the case to make it a lot easier to see what's happening. Now this is an NZXT motherboard and it has multiple different M2 NVMe ports on it. And I'm going to show you some of the locations for that. So this one, for example, has one in the bottom right. And you can see it here in this highlighted section. Essentially, this is one of several places that you can install an M2 drive on. Most modern motherboards have multiple ports, sometimes up to four meaning you can install multiple drives and then use them for different things or just have access to loads of different drives on your system, which can be really handy. It can make a difference where you install your drive though, so it's worth bearing that in mind because sometimes if you install more than one, that can make a difference to speed and sometimes not all the ports are the same speed either. It usually is recommended to use the top port where possible. In this case, it's hidden underneath this heat shield. Now, under there is the top M2 drive, and this will give you the best speed in most cases because it has the most lanes on the motherboard from the CPU, so it gives the best transfer speeds. You can see that this has a thermal pad on it with a sticker on top. You need to make sure you take that sticker off. Some motherboards will have thermal pads both underneath and above where the drive will install, and that's in order to keep it running cool. The installation process for this drive is really straightforward. Take it out of the box, and you basically then just need to slot it into the right spot on your motherboard. In this motherboard, you have to actually install it upside down so you can see the way we clip it in there, and then you just push it down. Now you'll notice there's a standoff screw pushing through on the right-hand side. Usually you need a screw, an M2 screw, that will screw through into that and then hold the drive in place. In this instance, the heat shield that goes over the top, the screw passes through that and then through the drive and into the standoff, and it's one screw that holds everything down on that side, and then you have to screw it in on both sides to secure it. This will vary from case to case. Sometimes you have a standoff screw, and then a heat shield goes on top of that, and it's a slightly different setup. Sometimes you might not have a heat shield, and you might just be installing it as is. So you may need a screw. Now, if you don't have a motherboard, you might find that you have to purchase extra ones. I'll link in the description to other screws that you can use. And you'll see that usually, for example, with this crucial drive, you need a screw to hold it down in place. You can see me installing a crucial drive there with the same sort of logic, screw goes through. But some motherboards don't even have a screw system. So this Zeus Strix motherboard, for example, uses a plastic clip in its place instead. So you put the drive in and then it's just held down in place with a clip. Once that's done, you just then need to boot your PC up and go into Windows. Now hit that Windows Start button and then search for Disk Management. So we're basically looking to find how to get that drive into Windows and get Windows to recognize it. So if you find you can't find it in the Explorer, go for this, look for um, Disk Management or Create and Format Disk Partitions. That will open up the Disk Management tool and then hopefully, if it's recognized, it'll pop up and it'll say initialize disk. So I'll recognize that the disk is there. Now, just for reference, this footage is from a crucial drive that I did because I couldn't capture it for the Kingston drive for certain reasons. But the process is the same across the board. So you basically need to go into the disk management setup. I mean, obviously, if it's not recognized in Explorer, hopefully it will pop up there. If it doesn't, I'll show you steps in the BIOS that you might need to go through. Once that's done, basically, you then click OK, and what you'll find is then if you expand the window, you may well find that there's a drive down there that's black. You can see it's black, and it doesn't have a drive letter, and it's not appearing, obviously, in Explorer. So click on that and click New Simple Volume, and then follow through the steps to assign it a drive label. Basically, we want to give it a letter that will then appear in Explorer, and then assign it a volume name, so volume label. In this one, obviously, I called it the Crucial Drive, but you could name it whatever you want. This was from the Crucial Drive, as I said, for the installation for that, but we're doing a Kingston Drive here, so maybe you want to call it that, or call it whatever you're going to put on there, games, videos, images, whatever you're planning on storing on that drive. Name it logically. It doesn't matter what you put. It's just for your own personal reference. The drive letter and uh, labeling then means that it will appear in the Explorer, and then you can access it, and then you can play around with it. Now the next stage is to basically test to make sure it's running at the right speed because you want to check. So I'd recommend checking out Crystal Diskmark. This is a free tool that you can download and install. 
and I'll leave a link in the description to download it. Once you've gone through the installation process for this tool, basically what it does is it runs a benchmark of sorts where it's basically transferring some fake files back and forth into the drive to make sure it's running at the right speeds. So you select the drive that you want with the letter that you've chosen, and then obviously go into settings and change that to NVMe, set it to nine uses up to 64 gigs, and then basically run that test. Click to run and it will run those tests for a little bit of a time but what it allows you to do is to check that the drive is running at the right speed so you can see the process here excuse the blurry footage it was a bit of a problem with obs but you can see that the kingston drive is running i've got task manager running on the left hand side just to give you an idea of the speeds there but then when we get through the process of basically running it for a little while you'll see that the speeds start to go up and it's topping out at 6988 megabytes per second which is just a marginally bit slower than the 7000 that's promised so obviously basically that's worked as it should have done and i'm happy with that so the performance has worked out as i said earlier if you find that it's running at slower speeds just keep in mind that maybe it's a slot problem so check out that other video to find out more about that now if you've had problems with it where it's not recognized in windows and you can't see it through any of those steps i've just shown you then go into your bios turn on your pc and keep mashing that delete key until your BIOS loads up. You may find, obviously it's gonna vary from motherboard to motherboard, but there are settings in the BIOS that you might need to tweak in order to get it to work. So the first steps is basically to see whether the BIOS is recognizing it. So you can see that in this instance, obviously it is. We have it in the boot section here. You can see the M2 drive, the Kingston drive is indeed recognized. Windows is installed on it. So if it's the only drive and you've installed Windows on it, chances are it'll be pretty straightforward. But if it's an additional drive that you're adding in alongside a hard drive, or an SSD, there might be some other problems. By the way, I also did a video on how to clone your Windows drive onto another drive. So if you want to move Windows onto an NVMe SSD, then check out the link in the description to that. That should make your life a little bit easier. Now, if we go into the advanced settings and poke around, look for anything that's basically NVMe or PCIe settings, you can see that there's NVMe configuration. We also have onboard devices here, and you can go through and look for the settings here. So look into underscore three configurations currently set to auto you could put that to pcie mode and then you also see below that you also have some other settings for pcie x16 g4 so that applies to things like if you have an expansion card like the hyper m2 card from Zeus, for example and you've mounted drives in there instead of in the m2 slot you may play around with those settings in order to check it and see if it works you can also go and look for the advanced system agent configuration tools and in there you'll see that there's a pcie express configuration you'll notice that the m2 slots you have the option there to look and set the speed for them so you can choose the speed and set that up in that way and basically tweak these settings poke around see if you can find the right settings sometimes there are settings in the motherboard which may be disabling your drive so it's worth bearing in mind and just having a work look through and checking the mvme configuration and pcie settings basically to sort this out another thing to keep in mind is also if you do have sata or ssds plugged in that may well be affecting it so be sure to check out your motherboard manual to find out what the implications of that are sometimes if using the top slot on your m2 drive it might disable your sata drive as well and various different ports now if you go to the easy mode you'll also see various other settings including boot priority turn on xmp if you haven't got that turned on already and resizable bar if you can these aren't related to your mvme drive but they will give you better performance overall and that's something to worth doing while you're in here and then save and exit and it'll reboot into windows and then you should have a nice shiny setup with a much faster drive and loads of storage space this has been the provoke prawn hope you found this video useful if you have hit that like button subscribe and drop me a comment this has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.